In Nazi Germany, there was a slogan printed on many stamps, posters, and banners. It read, Ein Volk, Ein Reich, Ein Führer. In English, one nation, one state, one leader. Hitler envisioned Germany that was strong, united, and homogenous, free of the Jews, homosexuals, gypsies, communists, and all other kinds of what he called Untermensch, subhumans. Unfortunately, he was not the first, and sadly, probably not the last visionary of such pure and homogeneous societies. Political and religious leaders of all stripes have and still are dreaming of countries and churches that would be united around the singular identity, be it one ethnicity, one language, one culture, or one right faith. It seems that all such temptations go back all the way to Genesis 11, with the story of the Tower of Babel. Humanity was still young, still speaking the language of Adam and Eve, slowly migrating east of Eden, but becoming more hierarchical, more organized, and less innocent. One day, they decided to make a name for themselves and build a tower, a skyscraper, that would prevent them from being scattered all over the earth. But this was not a part of God's plan. Having everyone speak the same language, live in the same place, and follow the same leader was and still is contrary to God's design for us. So the Lord intervenes and confuses them, creating a rich plethora of human languages, which in turn leads to people spreading, migrating to even most distant corners of the earth. As a direct result of this divine intervention, Humankind is no longer a monolith, but a multicolored and multilingual symphony. True, perhaps having everyone speak the same language, look the same, love the same way, pray and believe the same things would make the lives of our leaders a bit easier. Just look at the pictures from North Korea or Afghanistan. Don't they all look so perfectly happy in their utopia-like uniformity? But we don't need to go back in history all the way to Nazi Germany or far away in geography to North Korea to find similar examples of such ungodly temptations. 40 or 50 years ago, most country clubs here in America would not allow a Jew or African American to obtain a membership. The long history of redlining in many American neighborhoods was not intended to keep them safe or friendly, but rather homogenous and white. Even today, the stubborn and continuous refusal by some churches to ordain women, or to bless same-sex marriages, or to affirm the journey of our trans siblings, is not meant to keep those churches pure or holy, but rather to preserve the power and domination of their patriarchal, homophobic, and transphobic leaders. Thank God, none such vision of pure, homogenous world can survive the test of time, because such a scary and monolithic world is not a part of God's design for us.
when the Holy Spirit descended upon the apostles on the day of Pentecost, she did not make them speak one the same language. Moreover, the Spirit did not annihilate the rich and very diverse identities of people gathered there to listen. As a matter of fact, the author goes out of his way to list all the various places and ethnicities of the people gathered there for the very first church revival. <laughs> all church readers know how hard it is to pronounce that long list from Acts 2, 10. And yet, every single year, we read out loud all those exotic sounding names and places, Parthians, Medes, and Elamites, inhabitants of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the districts of Libya near Cyrene, as well as travelers from Rome, both Jews and converts to Judaism, Cretans and Arabs. Oof, what a mouthful. The Holy Spirit brings together people of every shape, color, and size to hear the message of God's love. But she does not erase our unique characters, flavors, languages, and identities. Sure, sometimes it's messy. Sometimes it's complicated. Sometimes it's so very unknowing. Thank God, though, we are not, nor will we ever be, ein Volk, ein Reich, ein Führer. Thank God.